Hey, what's up guys? As the video title suggests in this video, let's talk about charts. First of all, I apologize for not setting up the camera again. Uh, the thing is, I actually misplaced my battery somewhere guys. I, I can't find it. So what's the point of having a camera without a battery? I'll find it and probably before the next video, I'll get it uh, ready. Anyway, let's uh, continue with what this video is all about. Uh, in this video, let's talk about charts. Okay. So uh, there are a lot of requests, there have been a lot of requests asking uh, me to do a video on charts from a lot of people on basic charts and whenever people talk about charts they usually show like hard code some data and uh, see, uh, say how to bring charts inside your application and then take this data and uh, show it in the form of a visual representation that is uh, transform this data to a chart form. So what I thought was that was rather boring, right? That was rather boring and too mainstream and a lot of people have already done that. So what I thought was, uh, I'll make something cool. So uh, let's go ahead and build something like this. This is a stopwatch, right? If I just tap on start, it'll automatically. This is a radial chart, as you can see here. I've made use of radial chart and I'm, uh, I created a stopwatch that will do this fancy animation wait for it wow that's cool right you saw exactly what happened uh, for the minute a new track has been added in the chat that is a new uh, segment the new how do we saw this uh, it's a segment rather so for the minute a new segment has been added and the second uh, segment continues on as well based on this particular uh, data if I stop then automatically the chart vanishes but this data still exists and if I start again it continues exactly from where we left off where it left off uh, in a cool animated way right and obviously you could reset start this chart once again from uh, from the start from zero that's it so let's see how to uh, build a cool chart like this a cool stopwatch like this with the help of our uh, circular charts uh, let's get started. If this video is too long, what I'll do is I'll uh, cut this into two parts. The first part, we'll see how to build a stopwatch and the second part, we'll see how to uh, bring in a chart. Anyway, let's get started. I'll stop this as of now. Uh, I have a simple application that I scaffolded just now. Okay, there's nothing fancy in this. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, first of all, let me go ahead and create these three uh, floating action buttons. Uh, to do that, I'll simply do body and I'll add a container, new cont container alignment, uh, I'll give a padding, padding uh, edge inset start all some value and then uh, child new column uh, inside this children new row okay the row will be having uh, three buttons right so i'll just make one button and then copy paste the same for uh, all three so new floating action button uh, background color uh, color start green for the start and uh, on pressed uh, start uh, we'll have we'll write a function later on for this for now let this be like this and uh, child new icon icon start uh, play arrow okay what's the problem here cool right my alignment is a bit messed up but uh, yeah hmm. now that i have one floating action button what i can simply do is copy this entire thing replicate it twice more and here wow 
now we have these three buttons at the center and at the top right uh, for the i simply added a couple of sized boxes here and then gave it an alignment here guys so uh, we get this beautiful interface uh, once we add the chart above this this three buttons this row will automatically get pushed to the uh, pushed below so we no, need not worry about uh, bringing this down uh, as of now now let's uh, write some code to bring in the stopwatch okay first let's write some code to bring in the stopwatch and then uh, we'll write functionality for the start stop and reset then based on this uh, running of the stopwatch we'll take the data and uh, try to build our chart so let's go ahead and uh, create the stopwatch first in order to do that uh, what you need to do is go here and then create the variables what uh, stopwatch stopwatch uh, watch equals new stopwatch okay and uh, one more timer timer equals new huh, this is simply timer timer and we'll have uh, elapsed time elapsed time this will be a string okay this is what we'll be displaying oh is this showing an error oh, okay the timer comes under async package i think yeah cool now the error vanished right uh first uh, instead of bringing the chart first i'll show that in a text and then uh, later on at a later point of time we can i uh, will try to bring in the chart uh, so above this row i'll simply add one more child that is a uh, text and uh, elapsed time style cool uh, okay now that we have the variables let's go let's go ahead and uh, write the code for start stop and uh, uh, reset the millisecond value and then set state If I set it like this, then obviously it won't be a string, right? So in order to format this correctly, I'll use a transform uh, milliseconds function. Okay, this is a function that will be writing. This actually I learned from a guy called Andrew, I think. Now, if you notice, I am taking the milliseconds, dividing it by 10, it will give it in hundreds. A millisecond is, uh, 1000 milliseconds is just one second, guys. Okay. So, to get the second, what do I need to do? Uh, if it is 59,000, just divide it by 1000 and it will give 59 seconds, right? So instead of dividing it by 1000, first I am dividing it by 10 and then I am div dividing this value by 100. Okay. And uh, here I'll add this. I'll add one more. Hmm. Now you get where I am going with this, right? Uh, 
uh, this will give me the minutes once I get the seconds I can simply divide it by 60 to give the minutes and uh, these three I am converting it into uh, strings using uh, two string and then I am adding a, a couple of zeros in front the reason why I am adding zeros is so that it will whenever the watch is reset or whenever it is stopped whenever it is uh, not running it will show 00.00.00 or in case it started and then stopped it will show 00, zero uh, colon uh, whatever the time was and uh, colon whatever the uh, hundredth of a millisecond was right uh, not hundredth of a millisecond hundredth of a second was right uh, I, I might have confused I think I might have confused you but you will see it in a bit and then you will get a clear uh, understanding so transform milliseconds and uh, here I will simply send the time so far cool now this will give me a string which I am storing here. Here I'll sim I have simply given the elapsed time. Where is it? Elapsed time here, right? So everything is fine. Let's save this and uh, see if this works perfectly. Now if we tap on these buttons, uh, obviously nothing would happen because we haven't made the call here, right? So here I'll just give start watch here i'll give stop watch here i'll give reset watch save this wait for it to hot reload yeah it hot reloaded if i just tap on this now as you can see uh, watch is getting displayed but uh, the time is not being uh, run here but if i tap on stop it will automatically update it with the time see you can see this right the reason is because only when i tap on stopwatch the set time function is called again and this elapsed time is updated if i reset also automatically it will get updated see but if i tap on this again nothing happens only when i stop it i am able to see the change so what you need to be doing is you need to be writing a timer function that will periodically call this set time or that will periodically set this elapsed time to whatever uh, time that is currently elapsed right so in order to, let's go ahead and do that that's why i include the, included uh, created the timer at first uh, let's go ahead and do that before that i'll do some slight uh, wait i'll take this sized box and then throw it here here I will give it as height. Okay, uh, as some some UI stuff. Forget about this. Now what I'll do is instead of uh, as soon as I start it, I'll add a timer function. Timer new timer uh, dot periodic. So we need to specify duration duration uh, half half a second duration instead of this callback we need to give milliseconds milliseconds 500 and uh, update time okay update time is a function that will that i'll write uh, right away right right away okay that was not intended uh, update time and this what we will do is uh, cool this exact step this exact setting time step this one I am doing it here as well right and I am calling this update time once in every half seconds when the watch is started that's it let's see what happens now I'll reload rest reset this now we have some spacing here right if I tap on start every half second it gets but there is no effect right so what i'll do is i'll reduce this even uh, a little if i tap on start now wow you get a nice stopwatch right cool right you can see that uh, stopwatch functions perfectly i'll stop this it stopped i'll start this again it starts from exactly where it stopped stop this reset it start it again so now we have included a nice stopwatch uh, inside your application 
with three buttons that is start stop and reset in our next video that is part two of this video we'll see how to throw in a radial chart radial chart above this so that uh, and the radial chart will take in values from this particular stopwatch that we created just now so that it looks really cool okay so we'll see that in part two guys i don't want this video to become too long that's why i'm making a part two uh, cutting this into two so we'll go ahead and uh, see that there if you like this video hit the like button if you like what i'm doing on this channel and you would like to see more cool stuff on flutter kindly hit on subscribe uh, and i'll talk to you guys in my next video bye